Hello, I'm Zash, and welcome to episode 56 of my Steins Gates Let's Read. And for the record, Faith is the perverted one, not me. The script may make me sound perverted, but she's the one who is reading innuendo into all of it, not me. But anyways, regardless of the innuendo, please enjoy this episode. I rub my head. It hurts like hell. Damn that Mr. Braun. Did he really have to crack me so hard? Maybe I should report him for assault. Thanks to his brutality, I had to make a strategic retreat. Fortunately, I did not emerge empty-handed. The extra 10,000 yen a month hurt, but in exchange, I have acquired information that's essential to the success of my plan. All's well that ends well. Mwahahaha! <laughs> oh, Corinne, the building sh just shook. Are you okay? The Yuri and Krisu appear in the second story window. Looks like you really are unkillable. <laughs> I have seen the future, Christina. In three minutes, you will be on your knees praising my greatness. Uh oh. I don't think so. I run up the stairs. How could you miss something so obvious? When I tell Krisu about the 42 inch C CRT downstairs, that is her first reaction. Why are you blaming me? I'm not blaming you. I'm just disappointed that nobody, including myself, knows. We missed the forest for the trees! To summarize, just now, when the phone wave name subject to change shook the building, the 42 inch CRT was on. But, when Mr. Braun turned the TV off, the shaking stopped immediately. The discharge was untreated. I just got put a banana in just to be sure nothing happened. I'm glad. We shouldn't waste food. Nobody replies to Mayuri's off-point statement. We're busy reading about cathode ray tubes on the internet. It doesn't take long before we find something interesting. A cathode ray tube has a component called an electron gun, which uses extreme heat and a s strong electric field to accelerate electrons and turn them into a beam. As I mentioned before, the electron beam striking the TV screen phosphorus layer is what generates the picture. An electron gun could certainly work as a lifter. We found the answer. The electrons emitted by the 42-inch CRT are holding the phone waves by hole open. Discharge phenomenon is a result. So, the reason we can't use the phone wave at night is because the Braun Tube Workshop is closed? The Braun Tube Workshop doesn't have especially strict business hours, but it's usually open from around 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. That matches up perfectly with my observations that the phone wave, name subject to change, only works between noon and 6 p.m. The few instances it hasn't worked during that time frame can be explained by the TV being off. But how can a cathode ray tube emit such a strong electron stream? It's not about having a strong electron stream. The stronger were better, certain would have solved the problem I see so it can't be too strong or too weak. By freakish coincidence, the 42-inch CRT electron gun appears to have exactly the right level of electron discharge. Or, instead of coincidence, someone has set this up. Because we have evidence yeah. of people screwing with the timeline beforehand with him finding the uh, IBM 5100 so easily. Well, the first time, yeah. and then it went disappeared, but... Just saying. That's the only explanation. Somehow, the conditions here were perfect to create a time machine. Frankly, it's a miracle. No, Christina. Not a mir miracle. This... Mur <laughs> yeah. This is Murica! Murica, the land of miracles. Murica. This is the choice there of Stein's go. Gate. This should be our national anthem. Rather than glare at me, as she has so many times in the past, Krisu shoots me an exasperated smile, and she's actually smiling. Whatever it is, it worked. Um... 
Miyuri looks up from her costume with a question in her eyes. So, um, what do we have to do to complete Super Phone Wave Chan? Now that we've found the cause, there's nothing left to hold us back. We can safely conclude that time leap is impossible when, and only when, that television is on. We should probably test it, right? And there's still the final check of the phone wave to do. You're right, Okabe. What? Go downstairs and turn that TV back on. I'm a dead man. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious, Christina. Allow me to dub that. Mission impossible. I'm not going back down there. My head still hurts from last time. Next time, I doubt I'll make it out alive. Whatever. Just go already. Krisu orders me with a sour look. It's like I'm the assistant here. If anyone can do it. It's you. You made an amazing discovery just now, didn't you? Assistant mine, have you finally recognized my greatness as a mad scientist? No. Ah. Damn, that was harsh. Oh, whoops. I was supposed to flatter him so he'd feel like going, right? Yes, you're an amazing mad scientist. It's too late. Anyway. Now that we've found the lifter, the time machine is 99% complete. Krisu's expression suddenly turns serious, but I can see the hunger in her eyes and the flush of excitement on her cheeks. She knows that we stand on the threshold of a new age in science, and she cannot resist the lure of the unknown. She's a true scientist, no doubt about it. It's your dream, isn't it? To invent the time machine. Our dream. I've never really thought about it that way. But she's right. My hands are shaking. Not from fear of Mr. Braun, but from excitement. I will become the undisputed Lord of Time. With the power, I will shatter the system and chaos will rule the- Okabe. Krisu interrupts my speech. I wasn't asking for you to I was asking for Ellipses. She spears me with her gaze. I meet it head on. After a few moments, I feel my mouth curve into a smile. I'll do it. Leave it to me. With that, I head downstairs. A cracked skull and an empty wallet are a small price to pay for science. Krisu and Daru send me off with applause for some reason. Mayuri's the only one who looks worried but I pat her on the head in reassurance. When I get downstairs, Suzaha and the chipmunk are sitting side by side on the bench outside. Oh. Lipsies. Nai gives me a quick bow, then hides behind Suzaha. Shaking upstairs put the boss in a bad mood. Nai and I are waiting it out. Damn. Now I really don't want to go in there. Um, are you okay? Dad hit you pretty hard. I'll have you know that my brain is more valuable than the Mona Lisa. Your father may have set humanity back hundreds of years by wiping out my brain cells. Such a regrettable loss. Suzaha clasps her hands in solemn prayer. Uh... I'm not dead, just my brain cells. We don't have brain cells to lose. I'm sorry, Daddy did something bad. Chipmunk, what a gentle heart you have. I can't believe she's Mr. Braun's daughter. I suppose I share some of the blame. Your father and I are even. Nice smile slightly at my words of comfort. Ah. Now then, part-time warrior, I have a request of you. I need you to distract Mr. Braun for about five seconds. Suzaha's eyes start to shine. Uh-oh. You mean uh -oh. to seduce him? You mean seduce him? She flexes her bicep for some reason. Oh, it's Mr. Braun, so maybe. Go on. Touch it. 
Mine's taken out of contact. Hush, mother! Do not want your oof over here, hush. She insists, so I poke it. It's just as hard as her confidence suggests. Okay, then. Mother! <laughs> she just told me to do as I'm told. Why, yeah. A good dumpling does that. She's probably stronger than me. But I don't understand what the flexing has to do with seduction. Well, Mr. Mr. Braun, Braun is a muscle head, he so... He probably would appreciate a woman with meat on the clothes. Yeah. Nobody said anything about seduction. It doesn't matter how you do it. I'm not much of a warrior if I can't handle that. Besides, you said you'd help me search for my father, right? I'm only returning the favor. Returning! Yes, that's exactly what that word says. I see. Then I leave it in your capable hands. Bad plan! This has bad plan written all over oh, yeah. it. But not too capable, too. I'll be caving. Suzaha, don't be mean to daddy, okay? <laughs> don't worry, I won't be mean. Calm down, part time warrior. Calm it down. Ooh, our last message before uh, we die. Yeah. From Lukako. Um. You and the Yuri chan don't go places together? You're both lab members, and I heard you were childhood friends, so I thought. I'm sorry if I misunderstood. Yes, I did 30 practice rooms in some Wait, does Lukako think Mayuri and Okabe are dating? Am I parsing this right? It's entirely possible. Okay. It seems to be the idea that childhood friends are always dating. Yeah. Indeed. I want to complain that he's the one being mean, but I just said we were even, so I'll refrain. Wait here, guys. We don't want your innocent eyes to see us. The chipmunk nods. Wait here, Sash. We don't show want your innocent eyes to see this either. Okay, you can take over reading that. <laughs> now, um, when we enter the store, we find Mr. Braun cleaning up the pieces of the broken CRT. When our eyes meet, another vein pops on his forehead. If you came to apologize, foo, I'll listen. But your rent's gone up, understood? I'm sorry about what happened. I overreacted. As a token of my apology, my lab's representative, Amane Suzahav, would like to present you with a gift. Well, get ready. Oh god, what uh -oh. is she gonna do? With a vigorous shout, which in no way seems appropriate for seduction. Suzaha whips off her jacket and... Wait, wait, Suzaha. Uh -oh. Wait, no. Clothes stay on. Cause... Woo! Yeah! Oh, wow. Throws it into Mr. Braun's face. Moi? I can see her bra... Not something you should be focused on right now, Okabe. Okabe, you're dead. You have you're a impending death. Is coming, and you're worried about a bra. No, wait, that's not a bra, but a tight tank top that leaves her midriff bare. Suzaha shows no sign of embarrassment as she rushes Mr. Braun. She slips behind him, grabs her coat, and pulls tight across his face. Okabe Rintaro, now's your chance. This is not a good idea. Now, wait just a second. Is this your idea of seduction? It looks like you're trying to suffocate him. Perfect seduction plan. Well, maybe she... Hurry! Mr. Braun flails his arms, trying to escape Suzaha's restraint. There's a huge difference in strength between the two. It's only a matter of time before he shakes Suzaha off. Well done, warrior. Your heroism will be remembered. Realizing that the only choice is to go for it, I dash to the counter, grab the remote, and switch on the 42-inch CRT. After about two seconds, an image appears on the silent on the giant screen. At the same time, the ceiling starts shaking. Kurisu activated the phone wave name subjects change with perfect timing. I imagine he's very angry. It's shaking again. What's going on? Did she really take off her clothes without knowing why? <laughs> You're a lifesaver, part-time warrior. If you can, keep him restrained for ten more seconds. During that time, 
I escape from the store. Ellipses. Outside, Nye's following earthquake drill procedure, crouching while protecting her head. I ignore that and look up to the second floor. At exactly the same time, Krisu appears in the window and gives me a happy thumbs up. But a second later, she blushes, shoot me, shoots me a glare and disappears inside as if nothing happened. What's with her attitude? I'm risking my life here! In any case, the experiment was a success, and I am now a dead man. Yeah. The 42-inch CRT was the key as I suspected. Now, how do I explain this to Mr. Braun? I don't want him to kick us out of the building. Perhaps I shouldn't have left it to Suzaha. Yes, yeah, perhaps thanks. not. I timidly peek into the store to gauge the situation. Come on, boss. Give me back my jacket. Suzaha is there, fidgeting her in her tank top as Mr. Braun glares down at her. Shut up! I'm confiscating this, fool! You pervert. You're the pervert throwing your shirt in my face like some kind of dancer. That was pretty kinky. Gotta remember to thank Okabe after I kill him, fool. Mommy, he has declared something pretty kinky. Oh. Yeah. Kinky? Don't say things like that. It's gross. If you say so. Anyway, you can work like that for the rest of the day, foo. Go stand out in front and use that tummy of yours to attract customers. I'll tell Nai on you. Ha! Who's she gonna believe? You or her old man? <laughs> no problems here. Suzaha's seduction strategy worked, I guess. Mr. Braun, what a guy. A little while later, I'm laying on the sofa watching high school baseball. Kumimato and Aichi are locked in a fierce struggle for the playoffs. Just then, the clack-clack of the sewing machine in the lounge suddenly stops. Okurin, can you come here? She motions to me while holding the costume. Ooh, is this here? What does she want? I walk over to her. Can you hold this for me? Spread it out like flap. Oh, darling. Mayushi, safe flap again. Flap! I got a flap. <laughs> Stop it already, perv! <laughs> Mommy, he says he has a flap. Stop it already, perv. What's your flap? Do you have a flap, dumpling? <laughs> I don't know. I am missing something. <laughs> I follow Mayuri's directions and spread the costume out by the sleeves. Hmm. She inspects it from a few paces away. It's hard to believe given her usual ditziness, but Mayuri's very serious about her art. That's why cosplayers value her costume so highly. The costume I'm holding now is a costume made for Lukako. I thought Lukako was against it, but I guess Mayuri managed to persuade her. Okay, thanks. Mayuri looks tired. She's been working all night. But that doesn't dim the brightness in her satisfied smile. Finished! It's done? Yep, I finished before Chris Chan. We were racing. You win, Mayuri. Congratulations. Damn you, assistant. She treats me and Daru like garbage, but Mary Mayuri gets the sisterly touched. That's because you're not... But that's because Mayuri's not a pervert. Or at least not a pervert like Okabe and uh, Daru. Would you want the sisterly touch, Sash? No. I have a sister, she beats me. <laughs> I know, that's all I said. My grandmother said, that sounds awful, and my mother lost me. Actually, I'm about finished too. Krisu connects the two cords she's holding. Done. Celebration is in order. But nobody cheers. It's a tie. Man, I'm tired. I want Ferris Tan to comfort me. And your flap? Of course you do. Honestly, I don't feel like cheering either. And it's not because I'm tired. We worked around the clock for three straight days to finish the time leap machine. But now that it's complete, I realize that part of me never truly believed it would happen. 
I feel my enthusiasm cooling rapidly. The fire quenched by one stark question. What do we do with it? 